Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do a smackdown between two high-end phones available on AT&T in the U.S. and on well, a variety of carriers for those of you who are overseas. We have the Samsung Galaxy S3 here on my left, and we have the HTC One X on the right. Both Android ice cream sandwich phones with 8 megapixel cameras, 720p displays, and lots of other great features, and we're going to compare them now. Alright, so here we have a battle of the super phones. Samsung Galaxy S3 right here, HTC One X over here. A lot in common, including price. Both of these are $199 with contract on AT&T, and they're probably priced similarly overseas for those of you who have these available on carriers in your countries. Both have 720p displays, that means 1280 by 720 pixels. They have the same 1.5 GHz dual-core Snapdragon S4 Crate CPU, that's the latest fourth generation CPU available from Qualcomm. Now, those of you overseas, you're probably getting the HTC One X with the Tegra 3, but us in the U.S., we get the Qualcomm chip because that one interfaces with the LTE radio that's used. Again, both of these also have LTE 4G as well as HSPA Plus and their quad band GSM. They both have 8 megapixel cameras and front video chat cameras. The Samsung has a little higher resolution at 1.9 megapixels. This is an unusual resolution for a camera of any kind, but a little bit higher resolution there. They both do quite well with video chat. They have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the GPS. GPS works fine on both of them, and they both have NFC as well. So how do you choose between these two? Well, there are some of you who probably don't even need to watch this video because you're really fond of either HTC's style and software or Samsung's. And then it gets to be, you know, it's a little difficult. This is like Budweiser versus Miller, Hertz versus Avis. You're going to like one better than the other. And if that's you, well, the decision's easy. If you're pretty much open to both of these guys, well, continue watching. Here we have Android Ice Cream Sandwich. Here we have Android Ice Cream Sandwich 4.0, almost the latest greatest since Google just let Jelly Bean out of the bag a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that soon will be the latest greatest OS, so it's not on any shipping device just yet. Anyway, close enough. 4.0 is pretty modern operating system. HTC Sense 4 software on the HTC device, and you've got Samsung TouchWiz, the latest version, on the Galaxy S3. Now, both of these phones are made of polycarbonate, and uh, not that polycarbonate is some really high-end, expensive, ritzy material like carbon fiber is, but it, it, it denotes usually something that's pretty cool looking and a little different, like the Nokia Lumia 900 also uses polycarbonate. And the HTC One X has mu much the same look. Uh, the, the unibody build, kind of a neat matte finish. It looks like a quality piece. A little glossy on the sides here, and you can watch our full video reviews of each of these devices and read our written reviews to learn even more. Good looking phone. It's available in uh, blackish gray or in white. And it looks like pretty chic. Got that curved Gorilla Glass thing going on over here. Nice, high-end looking phone. Samsung, on the other hand, I'm going to pick on them, and that's no surprise I did that in our full review of the phone, too. This is polycarbonate that looks like your same old cheesy Samsung plastics. This is the blue one, obviously, which has a kind of mirror finish with some striations. You can see it's also available in white, if you like that better. And soon it's going to be available in a garnet red color on AT&T as well. But it looks like your usual glossy kind of Samsung product. They just don't really make it look expensive, high-end chic, which is kind of a bummer when you've got a, a high-end flagship phone, right? You want to feel a little pride when you take that out of your pocket and say, look at my fancy-looking phone. Well, not so much here. Certainly is thin. Samsung is good at that. It's light. It's not a bad-looking phone by any means. It's a very nice-looking phone. just doesn't look as expensive as the HTC. While that unibody design on the HTC might look really nice, uh, the bad thing is the battery is sealed inside. There is no micro SD card slot. To get it that thin and to make a unibody design, that means no access to you for the battery. Sorry about that. So you've got your 1800 milliamp battery inside, and if you need more power, you're either going to have to use some kind of external charging pack or, well, plug it into the wall. But Samsung gets extra points for having a removable battery. You can actually take the back off the phone. That seems to be an increasingly rare feature. You just grab it from the yank point over here, and you can peel it off. There's your battery, 2100 milliamps, so a little bit bigger. Honestly, both of these guys run fairly similarly in terms of run times. Maybe you get a half an hour more out of the Samsung. That's about it. You've got your micro SIM slot here and your micro SD card slot. Nice. So you can expand the storage. Both of these guys have 16 gigs of internal storage. So again, big points to Samsung there for that expandable storage and for the removable battery. 
In terms of RAM, the HTC has the usual high-end 1 gig of RAM. The Samsung, funny thing, when it made this, this switch from uh, the Exynos CPU that's available overseas to the Qualcomm dual core, it got 2 gigs of RAM. I think it's kind of a consolation prize. Right now, it's not that you generally need that much to run your applications, but it's there for you. In terms of synthetic performance, you're looking at pretty much identical benchmarks because they're running, well, the same CPU. So you're going to see about 5,000 on Quadrant, for example. Close to 60 FIPS on GL benchmark tests. The, the HTC tends to score a point or two higher. Hard to say why that is, but that's not really very significant in terms of frames per second performance. They're both very good. And they both run games equally as well. Again, they're on. you're looking at the same internal hardware here, the same brains. They both do Adobe Flash just as well, web browsing. So we're not going to bore you and show you web browser load comparison times or Flash performance because it's the same on both of these. Speaking of browser load times, both of these have LTE 4G on AT&T, and they have pretty much identical reception, too, so no real deciding factor there. Don't go by the bars, go by the reported decibels of signal, and doing that, you can get to that in settings, by the way, about this phone, and you can look at your network settings and information. Uh, they pull in the same signal, and they both do well. Both have excellent voice quality, also. They're my two favorite voice phones on AT&T for call clarity. The HTC has a somewhat louder speakerphone, give us some points there, and it has that Beats audio, so you get some pretty nice sound out of headphones. Yeah, a little bit bassy maybe, but it sounds good. Now, in terms of display, HTC gets the advantage here. They have a Super LCD 2 display here. Really, really excellent wide viewing angles, good outdoor visibility, nice natural colors, and very sharp. It's one of the nicest displays I've seen. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the iPhone 4S's Retina display in that respect. It just has a sharpness and a richness of colors but not overblown colors. It's very pleasing. It's also great for reading whether you're reading web pages or you're reading ebooks. Samsung loses points because they're still using that Super AMOLED display. It's called Super AMOLED HD. HD just refers to the actual resolution display. It's not a new technology per se like Super AMOLED Plus is. Super AMOLED Plus moves on to get away from that pentile matrix that is used in Super AMOLED right here. Uh, what that means is not quite as sharp a display, not quite as many subpixels. Now, most people with the naked eye are going to look at it and say, well, it's really colorful, it has awesome contrast, and that's quite true, and it's bright indoors. It does tend to fade outdoors, but the longer you read text on it, you're going to notice the difference. Likewise, the colors are very super saturated. Now, there are third-party utilities you can load to try to control that, along with the very cool light balance. It does tend towards the blues. Uh, but you're looking at way beyond, actually, vis the human visible color gamut here. Now, when we talk about notebook displays, we make a big deal about color gamut lately, which display shows as much of the sRGB or the Adobe RGB spectrum. Adobe RGB is trying to replicate the colors the human eye can see. And we're talking about yeah, something that actually displays more colors than we can see. And the end result is just that kind of super saturated, slightly cartoony look. Now, some of you guys, maybe you've been using Samsung's for a while, you're used to those really saturated colors and you like them and then that's cool too. But overall I would pick the HTC display. In terms of designing controls you can see here we have capacitive buttons on the HTC all around and we have two capacitive buttons here that you can't see right now because the backlighting isn't on and a physical home button. Now again that's something for personal preference. Some people really like having that physical home button and some people prefer capacitive. I thought I would love that physical home button at first but actually I, because it's so far down towards the edge and you have to press hard at a physical press, I actually found it a little bit annoying because it would tend to flip the phone out of my hand when I was pressing the button. But again, that's, that's a personal preference kind of thing. Power buttons up top for the HTC. Um, that can be a problem if you have smaller hands because if you're holding the phone like so in your hand, you might, might not be able to reach all the way up here if you're just holding it normally like that or with the other hand. It can be a bit of a stretch. I have pretty big hands. I can deal with it. But the Samsung's is on the side where Samsung always puts it a little bit easier to reach. I know a lot of people are liking that better. Both have volume controls that are easy enough to use. And other than that, they're pretty much ergonomically comparable. The HTC has a kind of matte finish, so it stays in the hand a lot easier, though. This guy, because it's curvy and it's shiny and it's slippery, it's kind of like a bar of soap. It just likes to squirt out of your hand. When it comes to cameras, the HTC One X made a big splash because it, it has a very fast lens, a backside illuminated sensor, and a dedicated imaging chip. So it can do cartwheels in terms of camera tricks, simultaneous shooting of photos as while it's doing 1080p video recording, for example. Um, 
slow-mo feature, all sorts of neat stuff. Well, the Samsung also, they stepped up the game. They always make nice cameras. And the 8-megapixel camera with backside illuminated sensor as well takes very nice shots. So this is a really close call here. I still find that the HTC exposes a little bit better for outdoor brightly lit shots where I get some white out with the Samsung. But honestly, with either of these, you're, you're probably going to be really happy with your photos and your video. They both do low-light photography quite well as well. One thing that Samsung brings to the table, though, are... This, the applications that, that work around the camera, like the Buddy Photo Share and stuff like that. Uh, I, I personally feel that Samsung has kind of overloaded the software on the Galaxy S3, trying everything they can to combat the iPhone for software features, but I like the photo sharing thing. So if you've got a bunch of people on the same little Wi-Fi network together, you guys can all take pictures of the same event and have them shot to each of the phones so you can see each other's pictures that are being taken. That is pretty neat. Speaking of software, uh, you get a lot of applications with the Galaxy S3. Yes, you do. It's not just the Samsung TouchWiz UI that you can see running right here. A lot of custom widgets, um, a little customization, not too much of the icons, that kind of thing. They've left some Android things intact, like you've got your apps versus, versus widgets picker here, whereas HTC separates them out into all frequently used and downloaded. Although with Samsung, if you tap this little one right here, you can get just your downloaded apps, too. Uh, the UI customizations on both are not super duper heavy handed. I, I would say that Sense lets a little bit more of Android 4 ice cream sandwich show through, but where the difference really comes is in all the apps. You've got S Voice, for example, on the Galaxy S3, and Samsung made a big deal of that when they announced the phone, and that's basically a very enhanced version of Blingo. It's an application that they've been using for voice recognition for some time. And it is not Siri, I'll just say that. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of luck with it unless the room is very quiet, and then it's not really natural language queries at all. So is it a, getting me a whole lot more than, say, Google voice commands? Uh, I don't feel that that's such a selling point. You get a memo application, you get Media Hub. Uh, Samsung's been putting that on all their devices for a while, so you, you can uh, rent and buy media from them. They both have their own custom music players. I like them both pretty well, to be honest. I prefer HTC slightly more. And Samsung has other clever things they do, like they try to do face, facial recognition of pictures so you can match uh, folks in your contacts, that kind of thing. It, it works okay, it doesn't work great. I, again, there's a lot of features here and I think some of them are going to need some fine-tuning. It'll be interesting to see where they go in a year, but right now, you know, it thought a plant was my best friend in Facebook, so you get the idea. But other times, it actually works very well. In terms of my personal preference, I'm more of an HTC Sense person. I have bounced back and forth between using Samsung and HTC phones for years now, but I feel like the customizations that HTC did were really to increase the usability. They're sometimes subtle little things, but they just make doing everyday things with the phone a little easier instead of throwing a whole lot of G Wiz features on top. And to show you what I mean about ease of use things, we're actually looking at a calendar appointment on both of these, despite the very different user interface. The HTC goes with the white, the Samsung goes with the kind of black look there. And I have a dial-in number and a PIN number for both of these. And I'm thinking, like, how am I going to see that PIN number when I'm, I'm starting to dial? So at the HTC, when we tap to dial our number, it's going to make the, we're going to make the call here. And see this little button right here? I can just tap this. And then here's all my information still, so I can see my con call attendees names, I can see the pin number and I can enter it on the keypad pretty easily. Now at the Samsung initiate the call and there it is here's the menu button, there's no way to bring up any feature like that. We can get to the keypad we can end call, we can do a headset and that kind of thing but I can't really see it without going back and looking at my appointment that I'm not in my dollar screen anymore. So that's the Samsung Galaxy S3 versus the HTC One X, both available on AT&T. And honestly, either way you go, you're not going to go wrong. They're both really nice high-end smartphones, identical CPU processing power, uh, same amount of storage inside, 16 gigs of storage available. Samsung gets the win for expandable storage and the removable battery. HTC gets a win for a better quality display, more accurate colors, a little sharper looking. And for their slightly, ever so slightly better camera, and personally I'm preferring that Sense interface and software to the Samsung TouchWiz and added applications. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to watch our video reviews of each of these phones, read our written reviews, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.